morning and welcome to our Easter cook along for all of you kids from all over the world. Uh, I'm Darina and guess what? Here's an extra <laughs> surprise for you. This is Rachel, my daughter in law, Rachel Allen. And hey, Gary, you come in as well. Uh, hi. hi. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to have lots of fun for the next hour and a half. And basically, we're delighted to be welcoming well over 2,000 of you from all over the world. So there are uh, people looking in from Canada, from the United Arab Emirates, from Netherlands, from Belgium, Australia, New Zealand, the US, UK, and lots and lots, of course, from Ireland. Um, we'd love, love, love to hear from you during the cook-along. Uh, so please send us in your, any questions you have. You can contact us via Twitter, Instagram, yes. Facebook, uh, via the chat box on the video. And don't forget to take some photos of your cooking uh, in your kitchen and the dishes as well and send them along to us. We'd love to see them. And remember to tag us on social media and you can use the hashtag um, cook with Darina and you can mention us at Ballymaloo Cookery School on Twitter as well. Um, so the Ballymaloo Cookery School Instagram, and just before we start, I want to say happy birthdays, a couple of happy birthdays. There may be more of you who have birthdays today, but these are the ones we know about. So today, uh, Ellie is going to be 11. Happy birthday, Ellie. Uh, yay! And Alva is going to be nine. And then, yeah, and tomorrow, um, Daisy is going to be 11 too. So happy birthday to all of you. <laughs> Have a great birthday. And thank you for sparing some time on your very special day uh, to, uh, to join in with Rachel and I. Now, so basically, let's pop that there for the moment and let's get started. So you've already uh, got a list of what we're going to do uh, during this morning arts cook along. And also you had a shopping list. So hopefully you have all or most of the ingredients you need. So Rachel, just give me the little list there for a minute. Yes. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to start on a tomato fondue. And just if I have yeah. a list of what we're uh, doing, that would be great. So basically I'm going to start on tomato fondue and this is part of, I'm going to use this for foldies, but this uh, recipe is super, super versatile. Isn't it Rachel? Yeah, so good. Yeah. Great for pa omelets, pasta, pasta sauces. Really yeah. good. Yeah, and you could put yeah, put an omelet, or you could put it over a chicken breast, or over mm. chicken wings, or Lamb whatever tops. you like. Yeah, and this is the sort of thing you can have made. You can have a big bowl of it made, and you can have it in your um, in your in your fridge if you want to. But anyway, so first thing, Rachie. Yeah. To get some a, tomato fondue. Yeah. So we're uh, have a sort of casserole a bit like hold up that one for a second we see something like that or you can see that this has been used many many times or something and like that. Uh, yes or a saucepan like that there whatever you have and then put that on the gas for a little minute and just on a very low heat now I'm going to chop an onion because we're going to start off by having some chopped onion and sweating that on a low heat yeah. until it gets lovely and sweet and melted. So I just, if you've never peeled an onion before, it's very easy to do it, okay? Um, so just, but rather than peel it whole, this is a trick. You can use, look, a little knife like this one with the serrated edge, uh, even though I'm a sort of cookie chef, basically I love this little knife. Uh, for chopping with it's really do you find these good I Rachel? Love that yeah, mm. so look we're just gonna cut Through not around the equator, but through the th root like that and then we're just going to now It's easy to actually peel off the the skin like that look peel it all off and then we'll tri trim the root but not cut through it because you want to keep that together um, because that's going to keep the onion together and then we'll put take off those little bits and these are going to go to the hens actually that are yep. running around. We're in the middle of a farm here down on the south coast of Ireland east of Cork City very close to the sea and out there there are chickens and pigs and cows and all sorts of things running around. <laughs> now so with this then so to chop this then look uh, Rachel if you wouldn't mind yep. peeling that one. Now important to keep the root together like that. So how are you doing? Have you do done that yet? So now I'm going to then put it down on the chopping board. I have a timber 
chopping board here. And it says, do you see there's an R there and an O here? And on this side of the chopping board, we, we, um, <coughs> we prepare anything that's raw or any onion or garlic. And then on the other side, let me give you a look. Uh, on the other side, it says F for fruit and C for cooked. And this is a, a timber chopping board, good heavy hardwood chip, timber chopping board. Now, to chop this onion, look. So just keep your, fing your fingers tucked in like yeah. that, okay, N knuckles as guide. And then put your, if you're using the tip of the knife, put your index finger along the back of the blade like that. Look, like that, and that's going to make it easier to, to tap up and down. So we cut, take your time now, but you can cut in as far as the root and you see because I didn't chop off the root the roots keeping it together okay that first that and then turn it slightly keep your nails tucked back and your knuckles as a guide and then just slide doing it sort of slowly so you can see it there we are and now miraculously we've got lots of dice now when it comes to the end it might be difficult to hold, hold it like that. So turn it onto its side and then just cut backwards and forwards like that. Now take your time. You don't have to be a speedy Gonzales. And look, that little bit, all these little bits we keep and we actually make a, a stock or a broth later on with them. So don't throw them out. Look, we'll do another one again now to take time. Now look, where's the root? There it is, okay? So you cut towards the root but not, not through it so that it'll stay together. Look, here we are. And you see my index finger along the top of the blade because I'm using the tip of the knife like that and then turn it around and then just slide it through like that. And there we are. So white onion, if you don't have a white onion, you could have a red onion, couldn't you? Yeah. Right, so but the white is fine for this. Now, there we go. Now, so Rachel, should we put some, a little bit of olive oil into the bottom of the pan here? Uh, it could be one of the vegetable oils either if you like, but I love using olive oil because it's so good for you and it has such a lovely flavour. So now uh, we'll, we're going to put the onion in here. We're going to cook the onion first until it gets lovely and soft but doesn't get brown or anything like that. Lovely. There we go. So we'll pop that in and it's on, this is on a kind of medium heat, isn't it Rachel? Yeah. Yep. And now I'm going to turn it down low. Shall I season it with some salt and pepper? Yep, and a little there, a little we we'll stir it around as well. Now the other thing we can add in, if you like, it is some garlic, and garlic again is super good for you. And uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can either um, just grate it if you want to, if you have a, a sort of grater, a bit like this one here. Uh, you can just, and actually you don't even have to peel it. Look. Hold it with your fingers and then you can just, and the, the actual peel kind of protects your finger. Now, if you, this thing is called a, a, a microplane or a cuisine pro or something, but look, you don't necessarily have to have this if you don't have it in your kitchen. I'm going to show you how to do it without having one of these. So look, there's that. Can I pop that yeah, in there, Rachel? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll shake that in there. Lovely. And now... Here's another clove of garlic. So with this one, um, I'm going to just put a little bit of salt on it just to create friction. Any questions? Don't forget to send us in your questions. There we go. And I'm just going to now, with a bigger knife, if you have it, put your weight on the tip of the knife. Look, P press it down like that first. Did you, did you hear that? Correct a bit. And then put your weight on the tip of the knife. Now, Rachel, if you have extra tips there, throw them in, throw them in. Definitely like what you say about the board using chopping onions and garlic on one side of the board so that you don't, you know, it's awful when you're trying to slice strawberries or slicing a melon and you get that garlicky <laughs> flavour. You really don't want that. Yeah, so you don't want that. I think this is the best thing, just yeah. onions and garlic on one side of the board. Okay, yeah. and then look, I'm going to add this in as well. This is going to be a really nice garlicky one, but you can put less or more in if you want to. <laughs> so that's that there. And we'll put that. Now, the okay. other thing we could do, we could make a little, uh, this is on a, lo a low yeah. heat. Or really heat. low yeah. now. Yeah. We really don't want the onions to burn, do we? Yeah. And so what you could do as well, because to make it nice and steamy and so that they don't burn as that, as you say, uh, we could make what we call, um, it's in English, it's called a paper lid, but in French, 
It's called a cartouche. How lovely does that sound? <laughs> C-A-R. T-O-U-C-H-E. Everything sounds better in French, doesn't it? Uh, so fold it in a little piece of paper like that, parchment paper, fold it in half and then in quarters and then in eighths and then in sixteenths. There we go. I think there's a question or two coming in. What are we making now? Is this for the chicken with sweet chilli sauce? This is the tomato fondue that we're making now. The tomato fondue we're making now, and it's going to be used in the foldies. But if you okay. just joined us a little later there, I'll repeat again that this is a really, really useful thing uh, to have in your fridge because you can use it for a pasta sauce, for an omelette, you can use it with a little chicken breast or a bit of fish or something, and lovely tomato -y sauce. I mean, tomato mm, sauce goes with everything, so doesn't it? Pizza. Pizza, of course, pizza, pizza. Now look, um, here we are. I've done for this little paper uh, lid or cartouche. I fold it into sixteenths. Now put it into the centre of the uh, saucepan like that, and then just trim off with a knife or with a uh, uh, with a knife or with a, the scissors, and you make it into a round. Look, then pop that down on top of the onions, and then it'll create a steamier atmosphere in the saucepan and then on a lovely low heat the onions will uh, they'll cook up nicely so we have to so while that's happening uh, should we start something else yes okay yeah, lovely so while that's on do you know something rachel what? i never actually called out the list of everything we were doing so why don't we go back to that for a minute yeah so now we're going to do and quesadillas, these are like Mexican cheese, melty me Mexican cheese cheese sandwiches with a lovely little tomato salsa and some guacamole. Uh, we'll also take a tortilla and we'll do these little foldies with lots of different fillings, including the tomato fondue in it. Then we're going to do some chicken wings with sweet chili sauce. And if you don't like sweet chili sauce, we'll actually suggest something different. And then, Rachel, we're gonna, you're going to make some Easter egg nests with a chocolate and the little eggs and everything in them and then we'll do Easter bunny crumpets so basically we have lots to do and uh, just want to go down along that okay a nice little busy morning yeah busy morning so now I'm going to make these little Easter egg nests and these are the simplest thing to make um, and they're just really a variation on just little chocolate rice crispy buns and for this first I need to melt some chocolate so you need for this four ounces or 110 grams of chocolate you can use dark chocolate you can use milk chocolate or you could even use white chocolate um, or you could use a mixture of dark and milk chocolate so first of all I need to melt the chocolate before I stir in the cornflakes or rice krispies um, I need to melt the chocolate and so we find here that the best way to melt chocolate to get the best result is to put the chocolate into a bowl and as you can see i've got a mixture here of dark and milk chocolate and this chocolate's in little drops um if it wasn't in little drops if it was from a big bar you could just chop the chocolate or break it up into lots of little bits and put it into the bowl now the bowl is a heat proof bowl this is a pyrex bowl and i'm sitting it over a saucepan and in the saucepan i've got about about four centimeters of water so it could just be water straight from the tap and the bowl can you see how the bowl is just sitting on the saucepan like that but the bottom of the bowl isn't dipping in the water i find it best really it is best isn't it Trina, to use something like this heat proof glass bowl or a ceramic bowl a plastic bowl isn't very good because it could melt on the bottom and the stainless steel bowl can actually get too hot so something like this is perfect and then what we're going to do is we're going to put this chocolate into the bowl turn on the heat and then as the water heats up from the hob underneath it's going to slowly melt the chocolate as soon as the water comes to the boil we'll turn off the heat and if you just let the chocolate melt really slowly that's the way to get the best result from your melted chocolate um, rather than boiling 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 the water and sometimes you can actually burn the chocolate it can go a little bit grainy in appearance if that does happen it's not the end of the world you could use it for you know chopping up to put in chocolate chip cookies or something don't throw it out but preferably we don't want that to happen so we're just going to melt it nice and gently so uh, uh, just to answer esther and patsy there uh, we're actually we're now making starting on melting the chocolate for the Easter egg, uh, for the Easter nests. Yes. Uh, that's what we're doing there. So we, I, 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 people are joining us at different stages. So basically, 
I will keep, I let, I, I'll keep reminding everybody of what we're work, uh, what we're uh, actually making at the time. So you're, go you're getting started on that. Yes. Yeah, so while the chocolate's melting, because that's just going to take about you know three or four minutes for the water to come up to the boil under the chocolate, and then as I said, I'm just going to turn off the water and let the chocolate melt really slowly, yeah. and then I'm just going to stir in the cornflakes. So you want to now measure out. So you've got your chocolate on melting. You want to measure out 175 grams or six ounces of cornflakes or you know something similar or rice krispies or something similar um for for normal chocolate rice krispie buns i just always use the rice krispies but it's nice to use the cornflakes i think they give quite a nice appearance for the little nests that we're going to be making and then also what you can prepare and what you can get ready here are a few different things so if you want to make little mini nests like it says in the recipe this makes 24 and these would be teeny tiny cute little ones um, just this size. We've got some little paper cases, so some mini bun cases or mini muffin cases, and we've got this little tray. Now, this tray isn't essential. You don't have to have any special equipment for this. Even if you just have some parchment paper, you do need some parchment paper or like a reusable silicone mat. Um, have that just on a normal tray or on a baking tray, and we're going to shape them on this, but also some mini ones of this. I have a round cutter. That, so if you have any round cookie cutters, you could get those out, get those ready, and you've got a couple of spoons for shaping them. So I'm not going to do anything else now, I'm just going to let the chocolate melt. Once the water comes up to the boil, this is for the Easter egg nests, I'm going to turn off the water under the heat. Just to let people connect in and maybe catch up with you on the on the morale. Right, and actually Avril there was just asking if she could if you you could eat, use an Easter egg, the chocolate from an Easter egg. You're lucky. You've obviously got some Easter eggs already. Certainly, Rachel. If you hadn't the other chocolate, yes, the buttons, any you could milk use, or dark chocolate. Yeah, we, you could just, just chop it up and let it melt. Super duper. Now Have they already got leftover Easter eggs. I That's know. pretty impressive. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> now, so, so we've started so far. Just for those who are just catching up, we've uh, we've started some tomato fondue, which is a lovely sort of toma tomatoey sauce, and we're going to use that later on for the little foldies that we'll make from the quesadilla. But it's also really useful, as I mentioned a few times, uh, to make for a pasta sauce and various other things. So we'll have that. That's actually, at the moment, what's happening in the saucepan there is the chopped onion is sweating uh, on a low heat. In other words, the word sweating, that's a funny sounding word, isn't it? It's just cooking on a very gentle heat until the onions are soft, but they don't get colored or caramelized or anything. Uh, so that's what's happening there. And then Rachel has melted the chocolate. Uh, she's melted the chocolate just to do the little chocolate uh, corn flake uh, Easter nests. Yes. yes. Now, next, what we're going to do is we're going to put on some chicken wings. Don't you all love chicken yeah. wings? Chicken wings. Good, good, good. I do. So, for the chicken wings, we're going to. Now, I know some of you don't like chili, and if you don't like chili, that's totally fine because what what's in the recipe we sent you is sweet chili sauce. It's a sweet sauce that has chili in it. Now, that's what I have here. It's the one we make here, but you can buy it easily. Now, supposing you didn't like chili, Rachel, what would you use? Honey works really well. Yeah. Or even maple syrup. Yes, yeah. honey or maple syrup, yeah. brilliant. And then we put some soy sauce too. So look, you just dollop a bit of the uh, sweet chili sauce. Uh, I could take another um, spoon there. Oh yeah, I could do this one. I, I, you could do it with your finger, your hands actually, your fingers, um, and basically that would really make sure that each of those chicken wings are coated. Now we also, yeah, we toss them around like this here. So chicken wings into a bowl, drizzle with sweet chili sauce, and then spread them out onto a baking tray um, or a little roasting tin or something, uh, and pop them into the oven. So which one what? do you think, Rachel? That's a bit yeah. small, and the other okay. one's a bit bigger. I, know. <laughs> I think it's slightly better to have a smaller one because if the if you're if there's too Thanks. few of them on a baking tray, what happens is it gets they yeah. burn, don't they? Now look, we put them in here. Good, good, good. Let's get That's the last right. bit out. Yeah. Now you tell everybody about that spatula there, Rachel. Yeah. Have you all got a spatula at home? Spatulas are really handy. Um, we use them all the time here at the cookery school to show people how to get every single bit of food 
out of the bowls so you have no waste because you really want to get every bit out there, cut down on waste, and you get the most from your food. Lovely. And then the sweet chili sauce. If you buy a bottle of that or a few, the, the one we have, we actually make here, but it keeps for months on end. So anytime you want a little, little bit of a perk up in something, sweet chili sauce is delicious, isn't it? Yeah. So now what we can do is we can put, uh, we can put yeah. those into an oven. So we're going to put them straight into the oven. We'll put them in a moderate oven. That's 180 centigrade, 350 Fahrenheit or four if you have a gas oven. We just put them in, we keep an eye on them, we give them a stir every now and then. How's that now, doing, Rich? Now, the water has just come up to the boil under the chocolate. So this is for the Easter egg nests. So this is in here, a mixture of dark and milk chocolate and little drops. You could use your leftover Easter eggs um, today or after next Sunday. And um, once the water comes up to the boil, so I'm going to turn off the water now and leave the chocolate sitting in the bowl just over the water now that's been turned off and it just melts really nice and slowly. Mm. And um, brilliant, thank you. So the chocolate's in the little drops, that's how it came. But if I had a block of chocolate or a whole Easter egg, I would break it up into little, into little, little bits. Like that, okay, Drina. Now, back to the tomato fondue. So basically we have, that's the paper lid. You could use that again if you want to actually, uh, because, sorry, I'm going too fast, am I? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Toby, who's looking after the camera and over here, say I'm speaking far too fast. So thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, so I'm going to take and keep that because we can use it again. Now, I don't know whether you can see in here, the onions have, have changed. They're kind of shiny and translucent. So they're nice and soft, and there's just a tiny bit of color, but very little. Now, into that, we're going to add some... Uh, the chopped tom tin tomatoes. I have two tins of tomato and we're, we've chopped them up and we're going to put those in. We get that spatula again, Rachel, we get all of this out. Oh, there's the spatula. Look, there we are. And th I'm going to, um, this is another tin. I'm just going to open this. Just be really careful when you're opening tins of something. Just push it back like that and then just pull, hold the tin very firmly, pull and make sure to take the a lid off completely because that's actually as sharp as a knife isn't it yeah and you could cut yourself yeah. easily so we'll discard that now the other thing i need to do then is to chop up the tomatoes in the tin so you can do that with a knife if you want to yeah we're going to use all <laughs> Yeah. Lana is asking us to slow down we're really because remember we're all cooking along together. Yeah, right, okay. Rachel, will you keep reminding me as well, please? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Alana, where are you at this stage? What what stage are you at? There we are. She's just answering now. Can I just say that for anyone that's just joining us now, don't worry, don't panic. We will be making um, we'll be starting another dish soon. We've only got the chicken, the chicken, the chocolate are melting for the Easter egg nests. And this is the tomato fondue. And the chicken wings are in the oven, but we've got more things to make, lots more things to make. And you can also, if you've missed out on anything, don't worry, you can watch the video over again. Um, because once you've linked into it, you can watch the recorded version of the video to make this Again and again and again. Yeah. And then just keep reminding me to go to speak slowly. Okay, right. Now, so I've got the added one tin of chopped tomatoes. <laughs> you know we need that either to wind someone up or to wind someone down. down. Right, okay. You're perfect. Right. Okay. So I've one tin of chopped tomatoes in there with the onions. And now I'm adding the second one uh. in. Alana says she's caught up now. Well done, Alana. <laughs> okay, well done. Now, and stir that round. Now I'm going to put this back on the heat yeah. again. And uh, this one here. And I'm going to season it with some salt. Season with your fingers. Look, pick up some salt and, and add that in. And then we're, because they're tin tomatoes, usually... The chicken wings in the oven, sorry. Yeah, the chicken wings are in the oven. They are. And they're in at moderate, 180 centigrade, 350 Fahrenheit, four in the gas. And they're going to be in for about 25 minutes? Yes. Or, 
Now, uh, chicken wings, by the way, can be a different size. It can be some very little ones. Mm. So if they're very little, it might take a shorter time. But we're going to yeah. give a, a stir every now and then. OK, back to the tomato fondue. I've added in some salt. Rachel, when I wasn't looking, put in some lovely pepper. And I'm also going to put a little sugar because tin tomatoes can actually be quite sort of slightly more acidic than other lovely ripe tomatoes in the summer. So add a little bit of sugar into it. And we'll put the, stir this round. Bring it up to the boil and we'll cook this then for 10, 15 minutes. You could even cook it for longer depending on how concentrated you want it. So we'll bring this when it comes up to the boil. We'll put a lid on it. Okay. Someone else was just on asking if we can make the tomato sauce again. But what we'll do is uh, we'll suggest that you can watch the recording to see the tomato sauce being made again. Yes. Because lots of people are um, have got this on already. Yes. So that was from... Yes. Um, so I'll, um, just, I'll just, Julia. Give, yeah, I'll just give a very big, oh, Julia, is it? I'll just give a very big, uh, a very quick, quick uh, resume of what we did there. We literally just chopped, for the tomato fondue, we chopped some onions. Then we put a little olive oil or vegetable oil into the uh, pan on a lowish heat. Put in the onions, toss them around, a little salt and pepper. Put a little, a, a little bit of parchment paper on top and the lid on the saucepan and we cook them for about 10 minutes or so and then I've just now added in the, the tin tomatoes and then added some seasoned with salt and pepper and some sugar so that's cooking along there now can I say just while the chocolate is melting so remember I put the chocolate in a bowl and I've got some water yeah. under Sweet. the bowl here in the saucepan which I brought up to the boil when the water came up to the boil we turned it off, turned off the heat, and now the chocolate's just melting slowly, and you can give it a little stir. It's not melted completely, but just give it a little stir while it's melting, and then we'll come back to this. This is for the Easter egg nests. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. The chocolate hasn't melted completely just yet. So that's the chocolate on melting for the Easter egg nests. Don't forget, if you have any little bun cases, get those out, um, or get out a piece of parchment paper that you can put on a tray for the Easter egg nest. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. Now, time for Easter bunny crumpets. Yep, let's make the... Thank uh, you. Now, I'm going to go nice and slowly here. So if you get the ingredients out for the Easter bunny crumpets and a little bowl to mix it in. Um, so what we want is we need about 110 grams of self-raising flour. Self-raising flour is flour that already has a little raising agent in it. Now look, supposing you couldn't get self-raising flour, you just had ordinary flour. Well, it's about four ounces, so about a quarter teaspoon yeah. of baking powder. So if you uh, ask your mum to, or whoever's with you there to have a rummage in the cupboard, and if there's some baking powder, add about a quarter teaspoon of that if it's plain flour. And then, uh, so we, add, I, actually I'm going to add uh, on top of the, of the baking, where's the baking powder? Here it is, yes. yeah. So we'll add, so just a little bit of extra there. So now I'm going to add a good teaspoon of baking powder as well as that extra bit. Put that in. And then we'll add a little pinch of salt. This makes a lovely little simple batter. And the great thing about this recipe is that there, you, it's made with ingredients, Rachel, that are pretty much always in your kitchen. Exactly. Some flour, egg, milk, uh, and a bit of baking powder. And then uh, we want uh, some milk, about 110 milliliters of milk, I have that there, and, uh, and then also an egg. So now we're going to take, if you have a little whisk like this, a very simple little whisk, it's really, really useful for all kinds of things, and it's good for this too. So just a bowl. Darina, yeah. I've got a little message yeah. for Ashin and Dara in Toonsbridge. Oh, yeah. her lovely Dara just turned 10. Ah, oh, happy birthday, Dara, happy and big hi to Ashin. Good, and that's beside the Toonsbridge Dairy, yes, the creamery the there. Cream. So say hi uh, to uh, the all Toby. Down there, so to, uh, to Toby and uh, Jenny Rose as well. Now back to here so we don't get confused. So back, I've got the flour in here, a little pinch of salt. And also, uh, I've got some baking powder. I added, it, there's a teaspoon in the recipe. You can put a little bit more if you're using plain flour. Now, we'll add in um, an egg. So, 
Just uh, this is an egg from actually from our happy lazy hens that are running around outside there. Thank you. And that's going to go into the hens bucket. So look, just put that into the uh, into a little well in the centre, and then uh, crack in the egg, and then with, take the milk and just gradually pour in. What I see, if I got the sugar, hmm? I didn't put in the sugar. I don't think so. I can put that in now. Lovely. So it's an ounce or 30 grams or 25 grams of caster sugar. So Excellent. look now, with the, like, with the edge of this little whisk, just gradually stir it around in a full circle. I better go nice and slowly and gradually add in the milk. Now, Everybody loves these, don't yeah, they? Yeah, um, so Yeah, and you can, you, of course, you can make them just in rounds. But for we thought we'd have a bit of fun for Easter and make little Easter bunnies with nice little funny ears. Thanks, Rachie. And just gradually bring it in from the outside like that. Bring in the flour. Now you have to do this quite carefully because if you do it too fast, you can get lumps in it, mm. and uh, it's hard to get them out. But if you do get lumps in it, not the end of the world. <laughs> Just push it through a sieve, Rachel. Would yes. be good, wouldn't it? Now, good. So I've got. We beat it, and it's, that's a bit quite thick. But we're going to put a drop more milk. And I'm going to keep a little of the milk back because uh, as it sits for a few minutes, it thickens and then you can add some more. So now, at the moment, it's quite thin, but it, that will thicken up in a, in, a, in a minute or two. So I'm going to leave that sitting aside. Or Perfect. I'll put it here for a couple okay. of minutes. Yeah. yeah. So that's the batter to make the Easter bunny crumpets. Okay. We're leaving it aside for a few minutes. Now, how about is your chockey ready there? Yeah. Yet? Now, my chocolate has melted. How are you all getting on with your chocolate? Has it melted? And Casper, I was wondering about Casper. I'm just looking at the screen here. I think Casper was saying his chocolate hadn't melted just yet. It might take a little bit longer um, for your and chocolate it's, to melt. Actually, Casper, it's better to do it slightly more slowly. Yeah. Because if you do it too fast, you could actually burn it, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. So don't worry, Casper, you're doing great. <laughs> Good. So I've got the melted chocolate in a bowl and I've, it's a nice big bowl, which is handy because you don't want a really small bowl if you're trying to mix the cornflakes in with the chocolate. So I've got cornflakes, but of course it could be Rice Krispies or really so many other cereals could be used as well. And just adding them in like you do for your basic little um, chocolate Rice Krispie buns, which are always kind of popular. And I'm just going to add in the cornflakes. Now, if you're finding, because it'll depend on the chocolate, sometimes you'll need less cornflakes or Rice Krispies or, or more. So you, you want, want them well coated, don't you? Do, you do, exactly. Yeah. yeah. There. Okay. Taking it off. Thanks, Trina. That's perfect. So just keep stirring it. And, but the thing is, if you don't have enough cornflakes or Rice Krispies, they'll just be rock hard when you're eating them. I love with these kind of things to make little small ones. You can make little mini nests because sometimes I like just to have a little, a little small little chocolatey treat or sometimes a slightly bigger one. It'll depend on your mood. So what we've got here is we've got some little eggs. Hopefully you're all able to find these little eggs. You could use something like M&Ms, you know, if you can't find them, but you know, these little eggs, these little candy covered um, chocolate eggs. I've also got a sheet of parchment paper here or grease proof paper on a tray like that or you could use a baking tray so make sure that's nice and straight and I've also got some of these little mini bun cases or mini muffin cases it's quite handy if you have a bun tray like this because then they sit in and they don't collapse when you put the chocolate in so all we're going to do here is I can make some little mini ones and some little big ones and you just some little big ones or so, yeah <laughs> put the mixture in and then I just want to make a little dip in the center because these are nests. And then I'm just going to put the eggs into the center. So I'll just put those in there. Mm -hmm. So you could either make about 24 of these little mini ones or I'd six like of the lot. Yeah, I'm going to make some of those as well. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> they're coming. <laughs> there. 
Okay, so I'm These just going are to... kind of one bite ones or two bites. Yeah, yeah. and they're lovely. So mm. all of you, what you can see I'm doing here is, and I think it's a good idea, you could try and do the same, is to get two of the same size spoons. So for the little mini ones, I'm using two teaspoons. And actually I do the same thing with buns. I use two of the same spoon. And when I'm putting a bun mixture, which we're not making today, we could do that another day. Um, but you take some from the spoon and then you kind of scoop it off with the other spoon like that. And it's quite handy, especially if the two spoons are similar um, or the same size, it just makes it so much easier. So I'm trying to kind of make them quite neat as well at the same time. And then for the little mini ones, you just put a little egg into the center. But I'll let you all just keep doing this there. And then these are good for days, but you won't be able to keep them for days because they're so delicious. Mm -hmm. There. Okay, how are you all doing? You're shaping your chocolate and your cornflakes or Rice Krispies into your little bun cases. We'll make some big ones in a moment. And could I just show you, um, in the meantime, oh. what's happening to the batter? Can you see this, Chris? Yeah, uh, there, it's getting, uh, it's much thicker now, look. And it's also getting little, uh, little bubbles. You can see that the baking powder is actually aerating it there. So look, uh, it's quite thick. So I'm going to add a little bit more milk to that mix. In the Can meantime, then, I'm also going to put on a pan so that it's very gently heated, just a frying pan. Um, you can, you know, you don't have to stop what you're doing now. If, but if there's somebody else in the kitchen with you, maybe they can put on a frying pan on a low heat. Yeah. Now, we've got two little messages here. Our good friend, Caroline Hennessy's daughter, turns 12 on Friday. Happy oh. birthday, Hannah! Oh. Woo oh. And also, oh my goodness, lots of messages here. This is great. Hi to Travis and Evan, both age nine from Cork. <laughs> Hello, Travis and Evan, just yeah. down the road. Yeah. And happy birthday to Jenny Galvin. Good, we don't. Yay. Yay. Good, good, good. <laughs> So, Lovely. I'm just going to put, in the little mini ones, you can put one egg in. Oh, can I do this too? I want to have fun too. There we are, we'll pop one of those in. Just one. There, there we are. Yeah, super. So you want to pop the egg in and get the egg, the, you know, the chocolate candy Lovely. covered egg. You want it to stick to the melted chocolate now, and then it won't fall off afterwards. Mm -hmm. So we've got some mini ones there, and now I'm going to make some big ones with two tablespoons. So what you can do is you can, if you have a round cutter, this is a cookie cutter, it's, uh, this one's seven centimeters in size, you can use any size for this, but you can use a round cutter, or you know, if you don't have a round cutter, and if you happen to have a plastic bottle, a plastic like water bottle or oh, um, whatever, you can yeah. cut it into rounds into rounds Circles, into pieces yeah, like this yeah and then you can use those for things like this really handy and just use them over and over and over again mm -hmm. so oh that's perfect don't worry Gina, I can, yeah no I don't, you don't even need to hold that yeah but i'm so, enjoying okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> um so look what? i'm just spooning it in and what i want to do here is just with the back of a spoon can you see that i just want to make a little dip in the center and of course this one's bigger than the mini mini ones and then into these ones you can put about three or five eggs whatever you like one two three actually let's go for five for this one somebody says they can't hear me toby okay there <laughs> okay and then what you do is you lift up you see once you've got it in there it's a little bit wider around the edge you lift up the cutter like that and it leaves a nice little shape. Or let's do one freehand because if you don't have a cutter, I'll just show you how you can just do them freehand. There. So just with the two spoons, just making a little round, <laughs> round-ish. <laughs> there. And then I'm just going to make a little well in the center and try and make it a little bit deeper around the edge than it is in the center. Do you see that? Like that there. And you can have fun for hours making these. And then more little nests or more little eggs in the center. I like to use different colors yeah. eggs. If I'm making a nest with three eggs, then I'll use one pink, one yellow, and one white. 
or five. And then you just want to put these somewhere cool for the chocolate to set. If you're in a big rush, you could put them into the fridge, but hot melted chocolate oh, shouldn't go so good. straight yeah. into the fridge. So yeah. I'm just going to make some more. Right. Okay, there are lots of messages up here. Uh, so one part, Casper, uh, uh, I think, was saying that his uh, batter was a bit thin and uh, so a bit thick, so he, uh, he added some extra milk to it. So basically, when you make the batter in the beginning, it's quite thin and then it thickens up as it sits as the baking powder starts to work and you get little kind of almost little bubbles it gets kind of foamy almost so if it's too thick then just add a little bit more milk to it but I'll do that in a moment so don't worry about that and there's another lovely one from Ashling Omani who says so proud of Kivna 14 Anar 10 and Audren oh, I hope I'm not making a big mess of their pronunciations who are in the kitchen with her uh, with her and first Kiva. time they have cooked together and the mom is super Aww. proud and emotional Kiva and uh, R and Oren thank you to oh, isn't that lovely That's and then so sweet. um what did Dorina oh, say and about Harry Maguire is 14, he says Harry Maguire says I'm 14 today oh my goodness <laughs> I love it. this is an amazing <laughs> day for birthdays all over the place uh so and uh, there's Anna Murray from Bishopstown 10 on Easter Sunday my goodness oh, me and what extra did chocolate <laughs> extra <laughs> chocolate uh, and what did uh, uh, um, Darina say about a pan I just said there if there's anybody else in the kitchen with you just put a pan uh, a frying pan on a low heat and we'll be heating it up just to cook the bunnies yeah the, 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 the little uh, these little batter bunnies okay fantastic yeah are you all are you all okay now with these little nests what we're going to do is once we've used up all the mixture um you can now just place these somewhere cool for the chocolate to set um if the chocolate mm, is still really quite hot it shouldn't go straight into the fridge because it can cause the chocolate to bloom it gets a little bit grayish white on the outside but just place it somewhere cool or if the house is very warm just pop them into the fridge for a little bit to set that's it now when you've got all the mix mixture used up that's perfect it makes but masses and of course it it depends on the size ones you make doesn't it exactly yeah. and you can um if you don't want to use all of the mixture today you could even put this mixture aside and then remelt it another time just to Could make more. Really? So yeah, cover really? it, push it yeah. aside, you know, for a few days and then just pop it over the heat. So Rachel, this Two. would make about six or eight of the bigger ones. It makes six of the large ones. Large ones. Depends, and I suppose it depends on Millions of little ones. Yeah, yeah. about yeah. 24. Yeah of the millions <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh no i forgot we have to be slow and specific is that right but you guys are really on it so don't worry what else very proud to see uh, ruby eliza and robert working together making Aww. delicious recipes oh my god this is what we all want to see we want we want all of you to to be able to have the fun of learning how to cook so what i want you to do as well after this i know you're on holidays now easter holidays when you go back into school you go and talk to your teachers and your headmaster or mistress and say to them that you would love if you haven't got cooking in your school to have cooking isn't that yeah. right rachel yeah yeah we want the cooking to be embedded in the curriculum so everybody all of you can learn how to cook and have fun in the kitchen and then feed yourselves really well so you're bouncing with energy and vitality from gorgeous food and also we would love little school gardens wouldn't we rachel yes so that you could learn how to sow seeds and grow plants and everything as well so you yeah this is how to use pester power so pester your teachers and i will be in terrible trouble now for for actually stirring up trouble <laughs> aren't we but th yeah really good so rachel shall i cook time to a few little bunnies now yeah, yeah. sure good um, one yeah. thing I just want to say, if you have had a chance to check out our other online courses, or if you're really enjoying today and thinking, oh, I might get to do this some more. So we do lots of different cook-alongs. Um, I've been having great fun with them. Yeah. And we've had some different themes, haven't we? Exactly. Or just really good, simple, lovely suppers. Um, you can go to ballymaloocookeryschool.online. So that's School dot online to find out more about our um online cookery school our um cook alongs and demonstrations yep. as well so okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to these. Think. right more birthdays, more birthdays. 
Oh Fabulous. my goodness, we must make sure not to miss any. Now there's there's hi to all the Kellyways. Where have they have gone? Where did the Kellyways go a minute ago, Toby there? <laughs> so Brian Crowley in Clonakilty is 11 today. Happy birthday, Brian! <laughs> and there's somebody, Alex, you shout out my birthday. We're shouting out your birthday, I Alex. turned nine years old two days ago, thanks. <laughs> I love that. Yay, happy birthday, Alex. <laughs> And Anna, Anna Murray from Bishopstown turned 10 on Easter Sunday. Happy birthday to Charlie as well. Okay. <laughs> now, hold on a minute now. We better get some bunnies made. Okay. Now, look, I, you. can you focus in on this, Chris, for a second? Because I want to show people how she thick the batter that. is now. Look, it was really very thin earlier. Now, do you see how thick it is? So that's a bit too thick. So I'm going to put the rest of the milk that I kept saved. I'm going to put some of that in. Stir it round. Lovely, and I would say that's pretty good now. Uh, if I need more, I'll add it to it. So now let's get started on this. So we put a little bit of a little bit of a, a, a vegetable oil. Perhaps this is a non whoops, it is. This is a non-stick pan, and that's definitely too much oil. So if I had a little tiny little bowl or something, Rachel, I pour yeah. off a tiny bit of this oil. Lovely. That's good. We just need a little bit on it. And I hope this pan, it's on down to the lowest actually, but, um, but it's a medium sized jet. So I hope the pan isn't too hot. But oftentimes the first bunny, um, may, you know, it's a bit of trial and error with the first bunny. Um, it may get an extra tan and so on or whatever. So look, that's take, you could, depends on the size of your pan, but you could put um, maybe, uh, you can put two or three, make a little round, spread it out. Now we need bunny ears. So look, we put a, a little ear. Oh my goodness, look at that. People <laughs> are posting in photographs of their, of oh. their food. Oh, look, that they've from? got that looks more great. eggs than us. They've got, we have no blue eggs. Now look, here's the, the bunny's <laughs> second ear. Look, there they we look go. They fabulous. Who's are those? Do we know the name? Yeah. Ellen. Ellen. Ellen Condon. Oh, Ellen. Fabulous. Oh, this fellow's got a very funny ear. What now, this bunny? Here we are. Now, look, you see? Uh, so here's my little bunny. He's got a nice little <laughs> chin. So cute. I love the little I'm getting ear. quite good at this. I really am. Here's my other little. I had a narrower um, one, a little thing earlier there. That one is great. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. There's so many more messages. Rose from Montanotti is going to be three next week. <laughs> oh, <gasps> yay! Oh, that's so lovely. Oh, hi from Jamie Walsh and Gary Vu. Literally down the road that's that way. Right. And happy birthday to AJ O'Reilly, who's nine next week from Buttervent. And hi from Ashling and Kira Cooper in Ballancolig. Lots of ideas for Ashling's 10th birthday on Easter Monday. That's and so there's lovely. Somebody, Alicia, all these wonderful Louise. names. Uh, Alicia Pope, Newtown Louise, Waterford. Louise, yeah. Is that, uh, is that how you say Louise? Oh, yeah, Louise? from Louise. Oh, sorry. And then please say hi to Alicia. Alicia. Yeah, right. Newtown okay. Waterford. Hi to um, Nicole from Siena and Amber. The Barry family in Ovens, Mary, Patrick and Ellen. We, and then... And don't forget their and cast, Tom, Tom Dooley. Tom, Tom Dooley. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now look, don't, we have to concentrate on our bunnies. We have to go back to our bunnies now for a minute. Uh, can, you, can you see the uh, uh, right on, on the bunny here? So we, you see, what happens first is little bubbles kind of rise up and then you wait until the bubbles burst before you turn it over. I'm going to have a little look and see uh, if it's ready to turn over. So I'm just wondering what's the best thing to put underneath this so I don't... I like, love this one, but I'm scared of his little ear falling off. We'll do a quick flip. Okay, we ready? <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Oh. Whoops! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> someone said, I did my dog instead of a bunny. <laughs> Julia said that. I've got Normally, or we could do Tom Dooley. We could do a cat. cat. But I'd, Go have, ahead. To, but I'd have to practice Tom Dooley, though. There are oh. so many amazing photos coming in, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much. Don't forget to use the hashtag cookwithdorina. And... Um, um, Yes, so we you know we had a few people had some issues getting on at the start. Please remember that this will be recorded so you can watch it back in your own time. And um, hi to Avi, uh, Eva and Amy and their dog Milo in Tuam. <laughs> and can you use cauliflower instead of chicken wings? We're about sharing. Yum, cauliflower is so yeah. good with sweet chili sauce. Really good idea. Delicious. Now, what the other thing you need ready for these bunny bunnies now? Uh, is you uh, well you could either melt another little bit of chocolate uh, like Rachel did earlier or otherwise if you had some of these little 
eyes, how cute are they? Little startled bunny eyes. And then our, our little uh, buttons, uh, little chocolate buttons either, and we'll use those to decorate. So now, a little wire wrap. Right yeah. Here we are. Here you go. Oh, sorry. Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super duper. That is so cute. <laughs> there we are. Now, so have a little look and see whether, yeah, it's good on the other side as well. So which side, I don't know which side to push it up. I think this one, this is a freckledy bunny, isn't it? I'll put another one on before I come back to him. Now, Rich, do you want to do one? No. Or shall I do another? Yeah. Take a spoonful. Can I just show you what I'm doing yeah. here? Um, the chicken wings have been in the oven for about 20 minutes. And it's a good idea to baste them while they're cooking. So basting means to spoon the juices like this back over the chicken because some of the juices come from the chicken mix up with the sweet chili sauce or if it's honey you're using so baste them like this and then i'll put them back into the oven and we're going to put the soy sauce over those in a few minutes do you know something now i have a bit too much mm, for tray. ideally i i have really put too many in here i should have kept back a few I was, remember I was worried earlier on, or maybe you hadn't joined us then, I had a choice of a big a sort of baking tray or a smaller one, and I thought if it, there's it's a... It's crowded. It's better to have one that just exactly fits uh, the number of uh, chicken wings you have, because if you, the tray is too big, the extra sweet chilli sauce will kind of burn on the tray, and if it's too uh, small, uh, basically they kind of start to stew. Do you know what we'll do? Now, because Watery. we've done this, we'll Big find tray. a solution. We'll take another baking. No, we'll get another little small tray. We'll take out some uh, and we put them on, uh, just so we haven't got too many in it. And we take out some and we put them into the oven on another little tray. Perfect. That's right. This is the great thing about cooking. Uh, if you, uh, you know, it's all about about learning. There's no such thing as a mistake. Yeah. It's just an opportunity to do it in a slightly different way the next time. Now look here, Chris. Again, if you look uh, on, you can see the bubbles uh, on this little bunny, and it's actually bursting. Also, um, I've put the, the I've put the batter into the centre of the frying pan so that uh, you have plenty of room for ears and things. So now. We'll just double check and see if it's nearly ready to turn over. Have a little peek underneath there. Yeah. This is a great pan, actually, because it's non-stick as well. Um, somebody's wondering what kind of pan you're using to... to... This actually is a non-stick pan, but it, it's not the end of the world. You could use it... If you don't have a non-stick pan, you could just put a little bit of oil in it and yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah, good. Now, look, we're going to flip this one over again. Now, there we go. Good, good, good. And now I'm going back to the tomato fondue for a minute because I just need to add in some, well, let's have some mint in this as well. Uh, I'm going to add in, this is some chopped parsley. We should have, cho I should have done that really in front of you. A little chopped parsley. If there's somebody there in the kitchen with you, they could do that. And then can I also bring the, the mint over and we'll chop it as well here for a second, Gary. I'd just now, like to say there are just so many amazing photographs coming in um, <laughs> of all your food that you're preparing and so many birthdays there are so many birthdays today next week um, we are so so happy that you're all joining us and just sending you all big 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 hellos and happy birthdays as well so we will get back to naming people soon and but. also the, who's that where's the, somebody's dog my bunny lost an ear oh my <laughs> god he's got one ear and then hi from this KD Murphy says hi from my dog Bonzo Good, is Bonzo having fun <laughs> cooking as well in the kitchen? Um, and then can you say hi to Jamie Drummond in ovens? Oh my goodness, we're, t we hate, I'm terrified of missing lots of people. Hi to all the Kellaways. They're the Kellaways again in Kilworth from uh, some, all the Powers and Ballycolic who are all cooking along and loving it. Hey, they're all having fun, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel in Cork, something about that, keeping the kitchen going as quickly as you are in her apron and chef's hat. Can I take that picture? Oh! It's brilliant. <laughs> There's somebody's <laughs> picture of dogs, and oh. that is fantastic. Now, one sec. Now, I'm just chopping a little bit of fresh Do mint. Do you want to show how to, how to chop? Yeah, why don't I? Now, so take a big knife if you have one. Maybe that's too big for you. Uh, but just then gather it up 
and we'll pop it into the centre. I must go back to my bunny there quickly now. Uh, and then put the tip of the knife on the board and look, just slide it forward like that. Now, don't be doing this in the middle of do cooking your bunnies, actually. This is very bad, Rachel, that I decided to just <laughs> chop this. So we chop backwards and forwards, and we're going to add that into the... Uh, and, and into the tomato fondue. So that's some mint and some parsley, lovely fresh herbs in there. Now, okay, Richie, he's ready, I'd say, that one. Look, there's another bunny. Hey, hey, hey. looking lovely. Now, so, and I have a little bit of melted, um, a little bit of melted chocolate here. So we put a, a few little eyes, and I'm going to take, um, well, I'm just going to stick it on with a, a little, uh, with a little bit of chalky as well. Oh my goodness, look, I'm making a mess. There we go. Good. This is a bit of a cross-eyed bunny. This one. <laughs> Good. Lovely. And we'll put. Let's give him a little, a, a lovely little nose like that. And then we have to. But bunnies have buck teeth, don't they? So we'll put a couple of teeth on here. There's his big buck teeth. There we are. Yay! Mine's got a very strange shaped. Um, oh God! This one's got a double molar there. There we are. Good. Now, and let's do another couple here. Good. Oh. <laughs> Gary's laughing at my bunny. I don't know what's oh going on. Oh my God. With it. That's very strange. I've never seen such a big bunny in all my life. <laughs> Can you see that, Chris? There we are. <laughs> Good. There we go. And we'll put a little, whoops, another little chocolate one in the center. If you do it right away, you don't necessarily need chocolate underneath because actually the, the heat of the thing will actually melt it, won't it? So here we go again. I, you can't do a... Look, I'm going to do a smile on this bunny. Look. This bunny's got a smile. Ah, look. Actually, I think that look, looks more like your dog Bonzo. There it we does, are. It actually. <laughs> there, there we go. Is it a good likeness, is it? There we are. <laughs> Helen from... Uh, hello from Susie in Galway. Uh, hello from Ruby and Jess in Cork. Oh my goodness. Vivian is wearing her Rachel Allen signed apron. A hand me down from her older cousin Grace. Vivian and Max are loving eating the leftovers from the Easter egg nest. It's brilliant. <laughs> oh, ah, good, good, good. So many. Super. Um, big hello from all the roaches. Um, <laughs> Lennon, Parr, and Woodcock cousins following. Oh, it's moving um, along in. Kilkenny, we're really enjoying it. That's so lovely. Emily in Cork. Um, what's we got? Oh my goodness! Happy birthday to Mairead Lynch, who is 11 today. So many birthdays. Hey, how from about, Julia in where, Dublin. How about somebody in Canada? What's happening in Canada there in the United the Arab? Uh, oh, it's the middle of the night. Oh, I see they're going to watch. <laughs> Hi from Benji and um, Coco in Donegal, and Killian and Anna. Anna, yeah. that's brilliant. From Holly and Connemara, Oscar and Harvey, my two dogs. <laughs> Hello from all the Ryans. Come Please on, you're hi. meant to be cooking. Please now. say hi to my hamster. <laughs> There's no cooking going on. <laughs> no, I send you messages brilliant. all the time. Send us photos, that's great. We've got lots well. coming in. Yeah, good. Now, what do we see? The, this one, I'm going to, yeah, this is going to have, uh, there's another little bunny. They, they, they've got lots of freckles, these bunnies. <laughs> now, they're, they're good, aren't they good? We put the... That's super duper. <laughs> that oh, a bit great. You, is your one nearly cooked yet? <laughs> Cook his chin. Bit. His chin isn't cooked yet. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, this poor fellow had one ear bitten off as well, actually. <laughs> there we go. Now, lovely. Oh, good. Well, there, this, there's one with the, that we, we, I put some little, actually, we could put some, there's some little mint leaves on, on uh, these ones here. And I'm going to put, why don't I, no, we won't put a chicken in, but what we might do is these are primroses. Do you know primroses? They're growing all around the countryside at the moment. So uh, that's a lovely little spring, a little Eastery thing. So we'll put a little primrose growing out of the mint hedge on these ones here. Wouldn't that be nice? Good. <laughs> Cute. Now. There we go. Now, is that, that the wrong way up? Shall I turn it that way up then? <laughs> there we go. Good. Well, now that was lots of fun. Uh, so, now, how is the tomato fondue? Do, when good. I better tidy myself up here, yeah. and I'll put oh, some. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Now we could go back to the chicken wings and put the yeah. soy sauce on. We definitely could. 
So okay. if you want to get a tea towel or an um, oven glove, and we'll go to the chicken wings in the oven. And if you get your bottle of soy sauce and some sesame seeds, and what we're going to do is we're going, they look so cute. We're going to take the chicken wings out now and put them on a tea towel or on something heat proof on your counter. Oh, that's good. They're getting a nice bit of color. And there. So if you have your soy sauce, you just want to give them a little drizzle of soy sauce, not the other bunnies, over the top on both trays. And then a little scatter of sesame seeds if you want to use sesame seeds. Mmm, very nice and crunchy. And any other seeds we could use? Uh, um, sunflower seeds? Sunflower seeds could Pumpkin be used. Seeds. Pumpkin seeds, yeah. yeah. Good. Any of those would be lovely and they'd add extra goodness to it and deliciousness to crunchiness. Yeah. And then we'll put them back in the oven for about another, until they're cooked and golden. So about another maybe eight to ten minutes. Lovely. Brilliant. Good. Thank you. We can always, uh, if, it's, if they're not crunchy around the edges, we can always jack up the heat a little bit, uh, Rachel, as well. Yes. Let's, uh, now I'm going to get another little bit of uh, mint here to pop. Actually, you can, this is green, so you can hardly see the wood from the trees here. Uh, there we go. Pop that on. Now, and a few more primroses. It's while you're just putting the those, to get primroses. <laughs> while you're putting those primroses on, yep. Darina. Hi to Ashin in Edinburgh, Connor in Yule. Hello and happy birthday for tomorrow. Um, oh no, ha happy birthday to to Maraid, who is eleven today, not tomorrow. Um, but herself a lot, and her sister. A lot of eleven euros. I know. Her. Herself and her sister Kiva are cooking up a birthday lunch together. That's fabulous. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, there we put our little bunnies there. That's super duper. Now, where are we, uh, Rachel? What a nice quesadilla. Oh. Okay. We'll, no, we'll make the quesadilla first, and okay. then we'll make the, uh, then we'll make the foldies. So now, there are lots of things you can do really quickly and easily. So basically, another one of these. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, the quesadilla, yes. you know, what you need to get are some tortillas. They could actually be tortillas are Mexican flatbreads, but you can buy them in any shop or supermarket pretty much now. And um, so they could be made from wheat, as these ones are, or they could be uh, made from corn, in which case they'll be more yellow. Uh, they'll look more yellowy. And we can put them on the either side of the board actually here now. So for this, put a pan again on the heat. Make sure the pan is nice and hot. We'll turn, no, I'll, I'll, I'll turn. Let's put it, I'll heat it up there first and then we can bring it onto the front. Right, now, so get that. And then you also want some grated cheddar cheese and mozzarella. So I'll mix the, mozzarella is the melty cheese and I'll get some, uh, cheddar cheese as well, if I could, or maybe it's mixed here. Is it no? A little cheddar we'll as well. Just while you're waiting for the cheese, hi to the two Lolas and hi from Kate and Abigail in Malahide. Um, oh, Oscar in Ballycotton. Hi, Oscar. I know Oscar McMara. Hi, <laughs> and um, hi from the Martins in Dunleary. Um, hi, hello from Offaly from Isabel. Um, who else we got? Happy birthday to my sister Anna on Good Friday, yay! And um, um, Chelsea's writing food, yay! <laughs> hi from Claire. Amelia, Anna, and Patrick and Sandy Mant are loving this Easter feast, saying hi to our I friends, to twins Harry before. and Clara in Tipperary, who were eight at the weekend and are brilliant chefs. Hi from the O'Shea family, hi to all the Dixons watching in Rathcormack and their cousins watching in Kilworth. Hi. How do you upload photos? Natalie's asking, we'll answer you now. Hi from Molly, who is watching um, from, oh, where is that, from Turner's Cross with her mum and her sister Grace. Um, hi to my uncle Ronan, making a big mess in the kitchen, Anna and Killian say. He wants to put chocolate in, on the chicken wings, but the real chefs, Cloda, 
um, Ivan and Tiernan say no, and Rachel says no as well. <laughs> um, hi from Dublin. Um, our dog Sunny says hi. Lots of dogs watching today. This is great. <laughs> hi from Emma Horgan. Um, that's so lovely. Such lovely messages. Thank you all so much. Um, Ella May, happy birthday for the next week. Ruby Rose and Claire. Oh my goodness. So many great messages and photos <laughs> coming in. This is brilliant. Now, we're na next we're going to do two things with these Indian, uh, these Mexican flatbreads, the tortillas. I, as I said, these are wheat or they're corn ones either. So we're going to make a, like a lovely uh, quesadilla is the word for a sort of cheese sandwich, a melted yeah. cheese sandwich in uh, with Mexican food. So we're going to make, these are really, you can put all kinds of different fillings in them, but whatever else you put in, you definitely need some cheese so it can sort of melt and everything. So generally what you would put perhaps would be a mixture over here would be a mixture of cheddar cheese and uh, also some mozzarella. And basically this is the mozzarella here and that's the cheddar. But of course if you are in the US or in Mexico or whatever, then of course you can get that wonderful Oaxacan string cheese mm. that melts so beautifully. But we can't get that in Shanagari, okay? Uh, so the first, so the, the, when we make this, um, and uh, I could, yeah, I, I think I'll make the accompaniments first. So uh, I'm gonna make a little tomato salsa, that's a little, uh, a little fresh tomato sauce that would be delicious with and then we'll also make some guacamole that's a great word uh, which is made with mashed up avocado so shall i do the tomato salsa first perhaps? okay yeah so the for the tomato and coriander salsa we want some tomatoes um, we want a little bit of chopped onion so i'll take a little if you want to chop a little bit of onion there Rachie. and then i want a clove of garlic and um, half to one chili. Now, lots of you don't like chili. Well, just leave it out if you don't like it. And uh, some freshly squeezed lime juice. So I'll take the lime and the chilies and the garlic and the onion. I'll take I'll do that. Yeah. I'm going to cut yeah. up a little bit of onion here. Just like we did for the tomato fondue. So you're chop, chopping it up and it's quite fine probably. Yep. Yeah. A little bit of that. So, um, and where is my recipe? Oh, look, actually Gary has cheated and, and actually uh, already done it. But the, uh, so that's chopped quite fine. But do it again anyway, Rachie, so that, and then we have a little, little, a little garlic there as well. And into that then, I'm going to put uh, some, I'm going to put some uh, tomato dice. So I think what I'm going to do, now tomatoes are not that great at this time of the year because they're not, you know, they need the sun and we don't have an awful lot of sun in Ireland at this time of the year to ripen and be really sweet. So, but we'll add a little sugar to it and that will actually sweeten it up as well. So we'll just cut it round like that, look. There we go. And this is cheating, Rachel. Right? There's two of us I doing know. stuff. <laughs> there we are. Now, and do it into little dice like this. Again, I'm using the tip of my knife and I have my index finger along the back of the blade. So, cut this again. And this is a lovely little fresh, they, Call this in India, they call it pika de gallo, which means a pick from a, a, a like if a little chicken or a cock just pecked you. Uh, so they, because it has a little, um, a little perk up from the chili. So let's put this in here. What are, what's happening there now, Rachel? I'm just turning the chicken wings one more time. And because they're nice and golden underneath, and I'm going to put them back into the oven for about another two minutes. And then we'll take them out, let them cool a little bit, and then you can eat them. There. So there's dice. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, just keep them as even as you can. So we'll add the tomato in there. So um, the depends on how much you want to make, but yes. No, not really. I'm a great believer 
uh, in children being shown how to use knives correctly. And I like a little knife like this uh, with a serrated edge and teach, uh, to remember to keep your nails out of it. I'll just do that again. Just remember to keep your, your nails kind of tucked in underneath your, uh, underneath your knuckles like that. So look, keep them tucked back out. And we can just look, we can cut, pull it towards you like that. And it doesn't matter if it's not, uh, if they're not all equal, equal yeah. size. It doesn't matter at all. Practice. Practice yes. makes perfect. I always remember years ago, uh, Amelia, was I have 11 grandchildren. And uh, one of them, little girls, is called Amelia. And we had, um, uh, uh, we had a, a food writer and a photographer uh, here doing an article before Easter, actually it was one year, um, for uh, a, a food magazine. And... Uh, Amelia was in the kitchen, it was cooking with children, grandmother cooking with children, and so the Amelia was in the kitchen, she was only three, okay, three, and we had rhubarb, and she was slicing the rhubarb, uh, you know, absolutely concentrating on slicing the rhubarb, and the poor photographer was in such a state of fright watching her that she could hardly take the photograph, but Amelia was totally happy, but it's really important for children to be taught how to use a knife carefully and safely. What do you think, Rach? Do you yeah. agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I Because otherwise they just, get frightened of it. I've always just they yeah. stood next to um, whichever of my children it was, just cutting and just making sure they're doing it right and teaching, trying to teach them um, to keep their hands back. Yeah, the, um, finger, the little fingertips back. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, exactly, the fingertips back and using a small knife, but a small knife that's quite sharp because if the yeah, actually, knife is a bit, one is brilliant, actually. Yeah. yeah, and if the knife is a bit blunt, then you have to lean more heavily, and you can yeah. actually cut yourself quite yeah. easily. So it's a it's a sharp knife. Yes, um, uh, the little serrated knife is easier probably for the little ones, I think. But the Rachel's point there that she's making about having a blunt knife. People sometimes think I won't give them a sharp knife because basically it'll cut themselves. But actually, a blunt knife is much more. Uh, dangerous and frustrating because you can't cut properly with it. But with a straight knife, you'll be able to. So that's the that's the tomato. And now the other thing I need here is a tablespoon of it could be red or white onion. Look, why don't I put this in here? And a crushed clove of garlic. So either grated or crushed, like we had earlier. So I'm going to put that in there, and we'll put some a little flaky sea salt. And a, a, little, a, a little salt, or it could be ordinary salt, or a little flaky sea salt. I also need some sugar, a little bit, for, because it's winter tomatoes. And also a little pepper, Rachel, if you have it there. Yeah. And now the other thing I need is some chilli. Now, if you don't like the chilli, just leave it out. So a half to nope. one chilli nope. de-seeded or finely chopped. Look, here's some chilies. Now, chilli are hot, of course. The very small ones are super hot. They're like, uh, the smaller they are, the hotter they are very often. They're like Scud missiles, those very small ones. So a bigger one like this would probably be milder. But look, with chili, either, if you don't like chili at all, leave it out. But why don't you start with just a little bit and then, do, uh, then gradually add more and more and you'll find you're enjoying it more. So inside in the chili, there'll be lots of seeds and sometimes you can just rub the chilies like this and this, this actually loosens the seeds uh, inside and then you can kind of shake them out if you want to do them into do it into rounds or otherwise you can just split it down the side let's take the head top off we'll give that to the hens and they lay hot eggs okay here we are there are so many messages here i can't even keep up with them rachel who's 16 next week big shout out to carla and rachel that's a good very good name in for boy philly <laughs> ruby and ramsey um um, and Amy in Westport, Tom Dooley loves the quesadillas. That's Tom the dog, don't forget. Um, Cafferty <laughs> Girls in Kildare, yeah, Kate well, and Roisin. He's well ahead of us with these. In Clare, uh, yeah. six year old Molly, and happy 10th birthday to Roisin. And there are more, they're just coming in so quickly, I can't keep up with them all. Um, so quickly, Matthew in Prosperous in County Kildare, Chloe in Galway. Um, oh, Edward's asking, are you going to eat the food later? I hope so. Certainly we are. <laughs> we certainly are. How about you guys? We're all going to share it together. Now, I rolled, if you remember, I rolled a the chilli there and I was just shaking out the seeds. Now, if you're worried that there might be more seeds in it, just cut it down the side like that. 
And look, there we are, pretty much all the seeds came out. These bits, these sort of membrane bits, are also quite hot. So now, and if you want it super hot, you'd leave in those seeds. But also you could dry out those seeds and you could actually plant them and plant a, you could grow a chili uh, plant on your window. Now I'm going to take, we'll just do, let, it's good to taste the end of the chili and um, have a little nibble and you'll see how hot it is. Um, so just cut a small little bit and if it's very mild you can add in more or, or um, otherwise add uh, less if it's very hot. So look, I'll, I'll do about half this and we'll cut this into little slices like this. And remember the chili is hot so your fingers will pick up some of the heat so don't rub your eye or anything with it or afterwards it could make your eye... Um, Actually, it will make your eyes sting a little bit, uh, but you could wash off the chili off your fingers. And if you do by any chance um, rub your eye, well, just rinse it off with water. That'll remind you for the next time, okay? Now look, some chili here. It could be red chili or it could be green chili. Red chilies are riper. Now, as I said, if you don't like the chilies, just leave them out. Okay, but do start to try an experiment. Now we'll add those in. And the other thing then, and we mix all of this around together. The other thing that uh, I need to add here is a little lime juice. And if you haven't got lime, lime is better. But if you haven't got lime, well then it could be lemon. So add in some lime juice. There we go. And then also some chopped coriander. So coriander is um, this, that's what coriander looks like. Look, why don't I put it down there where you can see it thing. And coriander is the most widely used herb in the world, much more widely used uh, than parsley. It's called, you call it cilantro in the US and in other parts of the, in Australia and so on. We call it fresh coriander. Now it's an acquired taste. The first time you, you try this, you might think, oh, yuck, that's disgusting. But then try it a few more times because then suddenly you'll think, oh my goodness, I'd love some coriander. And so, um, but if you don't, again, uh, there are some children, and I know some of my own grandchildren, who don't like any green bits in anything, Rachel. <laughs> if they see a bit of parsley or anything, they say, no, no. So you leave it out if, if you want to. So I'm gonna put this in. We're making an authentic Mexican salsa here. So we'll add that in. Now what's really, really important if you're cooking is to taste. Uh, taste all of these things so that you know whether you need to add a little bit more seasoning or not. So we'll add in, a, we'll taste a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Put a tiny, tiny little bit more sugar and don't double dip. So that's the spoon I used a couple of minutes ago. And then just get another spoon or wash off the spoon if you want to do it, have another little taste. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Now, okay, so put those there. And uh, so this is one of my little sauces. I'm smelling the chicken wings, are they okay? When you're cooking, you need to use all your senses. Your senses smell, because things sorry. smell different at different stages of cooking. Your eyes, of course, your ears, listen to the, sometimes when things are cooking, they sound different at different stages. Oh my goodness, don't they look delicious? And what did I forget? The other thing, a sense of taste. Now look, we'll pop that there. These are, we're going to serve this um, with the uh, quesadillas. So that's one accompaniment. And thanks very much, Gary. And the next one then is some guacamole They're made Guacamole are ma is made with avocados. Try and get a really nice ripe avocado if you can. I'll, can I take this, Rachel, mm. just to give a, a little white dance? Yeah, keep your, uh, I should be giving all of you a good example and keeping my worktop nice and, and uh, tidy and everything and wiping, along as, wiping as I go along. Isn't that right? I'll be getting lots of brandy points from the mums. There we are. <laughs> there we are. Good. Now, so avocado, then you want a nice ripe avocado. My, I'd, like my, I'd like it even riper than what I have here, actually. But anyway, this one is called a Hass avocado. It's kind of got quite a... Um, and they tend to have the best flavour. Uh, it's kind of got a knobbly outside. Um, the, the, um, f the ones that are smoother on the outside, there's another variety called Fuerte, F-U-E-R-T-E. 
and they tend to be a little less flavorful, but it's good to get it nice and ripe. Right, now, so we take out the avocado. You can get, take a spoon. Actually, this is, is not bad. I thought it wasn't going to be quite ripe enough, but in Mexico, they use the lovely ripe avocados. There we go. Get all of that out. And you might like to uh, sow the, the seed of the avocado. You can sow it, but it'll grow into a lovely avocado plant, but uh, you don't ever really have avocados, isn't that right? Now, look, scoop all this out in there. Could be any bowl, but believe it or not, this uh, actual bowl that I'm using here came all the way from Mexico, from the Oaxacan Valley. It's a green pottery that they make there in the valley. And they, you, I don't know whether you can see this kind of little ridges in it, the bowl. And that's, uh, they use this especially for making uh, guacamole. So the guacamole recipe, oh, Rachel, that looks lovely. So mash the, with a, you can do it with a, a fork if you want to. You could do this in a place. You don't need to have a, a fancy bowl all the way from Mexico, that's for sure. So mix this round. I'll take a little um, bit of uh, some, also we need some lime juice. So for this we need a ripe avocado, a couple of tablespoons of freshly squeezed lime juice, some olive oil. Now I'm just gonna... In Mexico actually the, um, the uh, little limes are often smaller. So we need a little, um, so that's the lime juice, that'll keep it lovely and green as well. I need a little salt. Um, yeah, I'll take the flaky one, I think, if you have it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Megan. That's super. We want a little salt as well, which always brings up the flavour. A little uh, olive oil, take a little tablespoon of olive oil, and then some coriander. Uh, Rachie, a little coriander. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Oh, sorry, that's... Thanks, Megan. Yeah. There we go. And I'll take the, my little favourite little knife again, okay? So we'll chop up a little, finely chop some coriander. Hey, so you think you don't like coriander? Well then, uh, try again if you, uh, if you like, don't like it the first time, a couple of times. And then uh, if you haven't got coriander, either leave it out or add perhaps a little parsley. It's not the same, but there we go. And then uh, we also need... I have everything in there, that's good. Now, so we have a little taste, a little spoon. There we go. Hmm. Delicious. Let's put that into one of those little bowls there. Right, this little one again. Yep, super duper. I'll take a, a spoon. Now. <laughs> Sorry. Shout out to Jarena and her pigtails. Oh, yeah. Do you like my COVID hairstyle? Yay. Her kids watching have been inspired and are now wearing their <laughs> pigtails. Oh, my God. I might be trending. You never know. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Send Thanks us. So many wonderful photographs and um, really lovely, super kind messages. Thank you so much. And Rachel much. has a pigtail, too. Look, well, there's one. A, a today. Oh, yeah. You've got plaits. Oh, that's Hi super good. Sophie and Emily. Um, Stephanie and Sally, Elsa, Charlie and Fia, and to Olivia in Cork who's 12, yay, and um, Hansi Lucy um, is in Cork. Really just, there are amazing, lovely messages coming in. I've just been taking out the little <gasps> chocolate um, oh. Easter eggs, oh sorry, no, well, and I've, got this here. Look. I've got one little cake stand on top of a, another cake stand on top of a plate, oh. <laughs> and um, we took that some super. a little bit of moss that was falling from a tree we put on the top and then a little nest sitting in that moss oh, and actually gorgeous. one little bird's nest which we didn't take from a tree it fell from a tree <laughs> fell onto the ground so i've got one oh, little nest sitting in that that's adorable oh, it's the chickens a real little can you imagine um the, how clever the bird is to to make Let's it. put it into the front there like that. That's super. <laughs> now, we better hurry up, actually. Yeah. Now, it says me, I better hurry up anyway. So let's turn that on for a second, Rachel. <laughs> now I'm going to do a quesadilla, and then I'm going to do a foldy for you, OK? So the quesadilla, we need the yep, tortillas. Yep. Thank you very much. Now, still. Now, so uh, take the recipe for the tortillas, yeah. if I may. That's lovely. Quesadillas. Turn on, put a pan, preferably... Uh, if you have a heavy iron pan, that's fine, but 
If you don't, that's okay too. Just use whatever pan you have, okay? Take two of these and thank you very much. Um, so uh, we want the, the, sorry, it's very hot already. No, I don't want it to be too hot, yeah. Too okay. yeah. And then we have some cheddar cheese or cheddar and mozzarella mixed. Also some, if you could, may I have a spring onion there, Gary, just to show, show everybody, the students. I don't, don't, when I say the students, all, all you little dotes and big dotes and all kinds of dotes out there cooking along with us. May I have a, <laughs> my knife again for a second if I could. Oh, look at this. This is all happening. The lovely sticky chicken wings. And that's watercress, isn't it, Gary? Yes, yeah. We now can look. see on the messages we've got, we've got parents getting involved. We've got um, um, so Michael and his father are apparently doing a fabulous job. Look, this is all the messages. Thanks. Um, you should start a new hashtag to read those big tales for people to send in photos of their replicas of their big tales. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Oh, I am. You can't imagine how excited I am to be cool. She's going to wear them every day it's now. It's just great to be cool when you're an ancient granny like me. There we are. My grandchildren will be mightily impressed or maybe maybe embarrassed, actually. That might be more like it. Now, look, here we go. Okay. So, uh, so take one of these and then uh, I've just chopped some of a scallion or a spring onion there actually I just got, let's hold it up again Gary because I did it so fast I forgot I was meant to be going slow okay look uh, that's a spring onion or a scallion if you have that just chop that again if you have some chili if you like chili if you don't like chili you leave it out okay so we could do it in little strips or in little dice so uh, lay um, a tortilla on the, you can put it on the hot pan or you can lift it you could get these ready early and these are really easy if you have the ingredients. When you come home from school, you can make this up in a, in a couple of minutes. So sprinkle, uh, I'm gonna do a mixture of um, mozzarella and a nice good kind of perky cheddar. So we'll put some of this on here. You could actually do this on the pan if you wanted to, so you didn't have to lift it over, but hopefully I won't drop it when I'm lifting it over. Keep it in a little bit from the sides. I might put a tiny bit of salt and a bit of pepper. Will you put a bit of pepper on it mm -hmm. for me? Rachel, we'll sprinkle on some of these spring onions. Now you could put little bits of tomato, bits of chopped chicken, little bits of chorizo, all kinds of things in there, couldn't you, Rach? Absolutely. My one yeah, my leftover chili. cooked chicken. Yeah. Salami. Now, look, 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 here we are. Now, I'm gonna put another little bit of cheese on top. We don't put too much, look. And then I want one more or less the same size, okay? And you press that down. Now, if you want to, you could build these up and have them all ready to cook on the pan. So we put, shall I put it on straight down onto the dry pan, okay? There we are, like this, and we let it kind of get nice and uh, heated up and kind of slightly brown on Thank one you. side. And then, uh, don't take that away because I'm going to do another thing in a minute, yeah. Now, um, and so, yeah, I could do it, I could get the foldies ready, couldn't yeah. I? Well, yeah, so this is a, so we're just going to cook that. What kind of heat is under it, Rachel? It's I've just medium, turned it down. It? Yeah, medium heat. Yeah, lovely. I'll put that over there for a second. Now, okay. So let's keep an eye on this. And then I'm going to show you how to do another kind of little magic thing. So if I have the, mm hmm we'll do some foldies next, but I shouldn't really be doing two things, no, one at the same time. Am I better to wait then, Rachie? I am. We might be better to wait. Yeah. Okay. What okay. we do have ready is this little um, fish slice scraper thing that we'll be able to flip this over with. Mm -hmm. And so we've got this cooking on, on just a low to medium heat because what we want to happen is we want the cheese to melt in the center mm -hmm. and we want the bottom tortilla that's on the pan to get nice and golden brown. We'd like those two things to happen at the same time. So by the time <laughs> the tortilla is golden brown underneath, the cheese should be melted in the center. And then at that point, and only at that point, not before, we're going to then press down to try and stick the top tortilla to the cheese and then we're going to flip it over really quickly. So if the cheese has melted in the center, as you flip it over, it can be a little bit messy. But this can be handy, this kind of, um, you know, fish slice type yeah, thing there. Good. How are we doing? Can we turn it over? Can we flip it over? Nope. We'll turn it up a little bit for a little, just to speed us up, I think we'll turn it up a bit, will we? Lovely. Now, if there's somebody else in the kitchen with you there, um, maybe they could 
go uh, uh, find um, um, the, uh, the ingredients for the foldy, which is like a little, this is a variation on a, on a quesadilla. And so what you'll need is some of that tomato fondue that we made. And this one is actually, we've, if it's a bit too thin, which this one isn't actually, uh, it's sort of quite, it needs to be about as thick as that. This makes lots of use, so you can use it for other things too. I have some tomato fondue, I have a little bit of pesto. This just happens to be wild garlic pesto. Oh, how lovely is that? Beautiful. Wild garlic pesto. And then there's a little chopped chicken, leftover cooked chicken. So we have that. And uh, then I also have an egg. So I'm beating up an egg. How are you doing with that? I'm beating an egg up. And I'm going to pour that onto a plate like that there. So now, in the pan, the bottom tortilla, can you see that? Is nice and golden brown in colour. Mm -hmm. And the cheese has started to melt inside. Oh, so now you just gorgeous. press it down a little bit so the top sticks. And then you flip it over like that. Mm -hmm. And the top side isn't hot, so you won't burn your hand. There. And you just press it down and cook it on the second side until that tortilla is golden and until the cheese has completely melted. This is such a good little snack. Um, this is kind of, I suppose, one of the first things that um, I taught our children to make because it's just a hand, really handy little snack that if they're hungry and yeah. we always seem to have tortillas. And, and they could share it wraps. with three friends actually and then make another one if they wanted to. Now remember, if you're having fun today with us, that we do <laughs> lots and lots and lots of these cook-alongs or just mm -hmm. demonstrations or fireside chats, lots and lots of things. So you want to check it out on ballymaloocookeryschool.online. Good. Fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, 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 and then you can, uh, you, there'll be lots and lots, we have yeah. other ones coming up. And Rory O'Connell, do any of you know my brother Rory O'Connell? Yeah, lots of, he has a huge fan base too. Um, well, maybe he might have to do something with his hair and have some punches. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and anyway, he also does uh, lots of these uh, online things. So keep checking it out and tell your friends, spread the word. And we love to have people from Ooh. all over the world joining us. Now, how are we doing there? Great. That's Good. golden you underneath. Pop it on here then. Yep, so lovely. See, look, it's golden and underneath. The cheese is completely oh. melted in the center. How good does oh, that look? Oh, Chris, you must get that. Do you see it? You have it. Good. That is super appetizing looking, isn't it? And then now, get a knife. Good. You're chopping. Yeah, knife. And then you cut it up. We put it on a nice little plate. There. And if you want to make just a small one, you can just use one tortilla, you know, to fold it over. A bit like what we're going oh, to do with the next things. Sometimes the little corn tortillas are much smaller, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. This is great because you can share with everybody. There. Yum. And I'm going to put some of the, uh, uh, I'm just putting some of the guacamole in little bowls, but of course it could just be a little dollop on the side of the plate or on top of it. And l let's, go, let's get this one. And they're good with sour cream as well, creme fraiche. <gasps> oh yeah. yeah, we should have had that and some grated cheese. Uh, I forgot oh, to say that. Oh, we've got yeah. lots of cheese. Uh, yeah, but you know, sometimes yes, you can, well yeah, you can sprinkle a little, and like coriander. Yeah. Yeah. Coriander, that's yeah. it. Lovely. There. Look, there we go. Now, Rachel, you put your bit of the thing on top of that. Is there a chilli there anywhere? There is. Oh, yeah. And for the very brave people, you could put a whole chilli on top. <laughs> and you could go munch, 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 if you wanted to. There we are. How lovely okay. does that look? Now, can we have some photos of your quesadillas, please? Yeah. They're good. Now, let's put that one there. And now, okay. Oh, yeah. Now, coming up, a foldy. Okay, this is a very, look, uh, or a red, you, do you have a red one? Oh. Yeah, look, I mean, how scary is that? Yeah. Now, okay, now, for the foldy, uh, whisk up, get all your ingredients together, uh, whisk up the, um, an egg like that, and then take, um, put it on a flat plate, this one's actually going down in the middle, um, just take, thanks for, oh yeah, we'll put a, a red one for, well, well, why don't we really go over the top and put two on it? <laughs> okay. Now, so take a, a whisk up. Uh, this is for the foldies now. So you take a corn tortilla or a wheat flour, plain flour tortilla, which this one is. Whip a, whisk up a little egg and then dip 
the uh, tortilla in the egg to start off with, okay? Just wanna make sure. This is not a very good plate for my egg because it's going down the center, but anyway, you can have a flat plate. Now, so then take it, let the excess drip off. I think this might be one of the quotes <laughs> of the day from Kate Canelli. I don't think mum has ever been this okay with such a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're really tidy today. <laughs> oh. In their house. <laughs> That's good. Oh. Moms, don't worry about the mess. Look the at most the food important thing oh, Caroline. is that the kids are actually cooking. That's really good. So now, um, watch on here for a second. So now take the tortilla and cut down like that from, from six up to the center. Okay. Now, and then... What you do is you take me. I have a couple of. Sp oh, I have a spoon here, so you can take a little Thank of the you. tomato fondue. And, uh, whoops, a daisy, and you spread it. Uh, say we could say that this is six um, here uh, to nine. So basically, from six to nine, you spread on a bit of tomato fondue or tomato sauce or whatever you like. Okay, look here we go. We're gonna make so pop it like that. Not oh too yeah, like much. from six o'clock to nine o'clock. From six o'clock to nine o'clock. And then you, you lift your, from six o'clock to nine, over that there, okay? Now we'll spread, there could be lots of different fillings. Now we'll spread a little bit of pesto, okay? Or this could be a hot sauce either, if you wanted to. Um, it could be a hot chili sauce, but I think a lot of you aren't that keen on chili. Now, the next thing then to add is we're just gonna put a little, some, a little chicken. Do you know, um, so what I what we could even, with this like would even be, you could put a little something with the chicken sometimes too. Why don't I put a small Jeez. bit? Give me a small bit of sweet chilli sauce just to mix it with it, if you have it. Now you don't have to put the, you certainly don't have to put the sweet chilli sauce in it, but I just want to, yeah, or a, yeah, that's lovely, just a little bit. Just, and there's a spoon. Mix this round like that. Now, and also the sweet chilli sauce, apart from adding extra flavour there, will also kind of uh, stick it together. So now, uh, from 12 o'clock to 3, we put in some chicken, or it could be a little bit of bacon or rasher or something, chopped up. Put that in there. No, not too much. Now we have the pan on, don't we? Yeah. Give me the pan on. Lovely. And uh, so we now lift this one over there. Oh, we're doing great. And now finally, we want some cheese. So this needs to be, again, mozzarella and some cheddar. Good, good, good. And leave a little space, thank you. And then lift this over here. So now we have like almost like a fan shape. So we put a little oil on the pan there, Rachel. And flatten it, flatten it down. We have a little egg on the outside so it'll brown nicely. That's lovely. Good. Pop that on. And you hear it sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Sizzle, sizzle. Let me bring it. Shall I bring this oh, closer to us here then? Or oh, we might turn it down a little bit. Good, good, good. So that could be, there are lots of different uh, fillings you could put in there. Shall I? Now, what else, Rachel? Let's go down over our things so that we can it tell everybody what we have. would love us to go over some photos and some things yes, okay. before we end. A little wipey down cloth. Because so, uh, somebody's mummy is complaining about the mess I made. There we are. No, no, no. The Not best they've made in their kitchen. We're going to put this for everybody to see. So when you want, you can start commenting on the photos. If you want. Brilliant. Now, while this is cooking, um, Darina, shall we look at some of the photos? Oh, if everyone wants yes. to see everyone else's photos, we're putting this up There's on Caroline. the screen. Oh, That's Caroline that? Hennessy. Hi, Caroline. Yeah. Assembling tortillas. Oh, lovely. That great. Super. Have you made your foldy yet? God, that looks great. What now? Who's what's that? Mayhem man? in the kitchen this morning. <laughs> Dylan and Penny having great fun. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And this one has so many chalky. Yeah, hey, somebody loves chalky here. This is a really chalky bunny. Now I have something to, to just flip over my. Thanks very much. Good. Oh, oh, getting ready to cook with Jarina and Rachel live from the UAE. That's from Ashling. Oh, fabulous. In the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and who's the next one there now? That's Caroline. We've yeah, seen her. Yeah, good. So much fun and so oh, delicious. What a oh. gorgeous kitchen. A really tidy kitchen too. Who's that now? 
Uh, can you go down a bit, Toby, so we can find out who that was? Uh, this was her Aulo, and we don't know where you are, but anyway, thank you. And many greetings, greetings from me. Zaya. I have a granddaughter called Zaya. Hannah, <laughs> Ben, Calvin, and Neve from Cork City. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at that. They made, their, uh, they made them with the Rice Krispies. Uh, they made the, 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 oh. Hi, Sarah Root. Oh, oh, look. Those chicken oh, wings look fabulous. And we love your pink apron, darling. There we go. Lovely. Now. Oh, I love it. Who's that? That's from Celia Cunningham. That is maybe Celia's son who is watching. Fabulous. Good. And... Who else have we got there? We planted Akira. our avocado seed. It's starting to grow. Oh, <laughs> Brilliant. that was quick. My goodness. <laughs> um, Chris, can you focus for a little second on my, uh, my foldy here? You see why it's called a foldy? It's now in a fan shape. And uh, so I just want to wait on time to make sure that, again, that the cheese <laughs> is melting and so on. It's good. And do it on a, so you can start it off in a, a warmish heat, but then do it on a lower one so it really heats into the, you know, really heats into the mm, centre. And it doesn't burn. Yeah, and doesn't mm. burn, exactly. So now what are we going to put this on, Rachel? Oh, would, would you like? Would you like it on that? On this one here. Okay. Yeah. Now, there we go. Lovely. So we lift this off. You see the cheese is all lovely and melty and everything as well. So this would be, look, I'm going to put some of Gary's little horse's ears around. The, uh, this is what Gary calls horse's ears. These are little scallions, but you cut at an angle, um, uh, Gary's, and look, they look, look like horse's ears. So we put some of those around the outside. Oh, and nice. there we could put, um, if, if one liked, you could put some, guacamole would be lovely with that. Mm. No, Rachel, you put on some as well, that'd be lovely. Why don't we put a few little bits of, we might as well go over the top, look. Okay. We'll put a few little bits of guacamole, which would be lovely with it. Now, also, avocado is super good for you. It's really easy to digest, very, very nutritious as well. Mm. So we need a little red on that. Don't we give yeah, me a little salsa spoon there? Or, yeah, oh, yeah, salsa. Sorry, oh, no, a here. little, uh, no, the, the salsa, this one here. Yeah, lovely. Super duper. We'll put a little salsa. There we go. Ah, ha, ha. Now, good. So now, what, what, there's more. Oh, That's look, I, Kelly, busy that's morning the, in the thing house. to do with the teeth. Look, you see, we had no white chocolate buttons. So if you had little white chocolate <laughs> buttons, you could do little buck teeth with the white chocolate, <laughs> little white chocolate buttons instead. Uh, so now, Rachel, let's get that uh, list and we'll uh, pop out our, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this back here because it's just so beautiful. I hope yeah. you're all hungry. <laughs> Good. to get to eat your delicious food now so let's go run down i hope we haven't forgotten something <laughs> uh, so uh, these uh, so we have the quesadillas with the tomato salsa and guacamole and they're here and uh, if you're very brave you can nibble one of those chilies as well then these are the foldies these are lovely and savory and you would lots of different we have wild garlic pesto in it we have tomato fondue that you learned how to make earlier uh, and then we also have some chopped up uh, uh, cooked chicken from a little roast chicken and that could be bacon either and then what else was in there or oh, the cheese of course mozzarella and cheddar and uh, so they're the best fun to make and uh, then they do, we have chicken wings with sweet silly ch la, 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 sweet, sweet chili <laughs> sauce and then we have the lovely your lovely cornflake where are they oh here they are how could i possibly not see them uh, with the all the easter egg nests be large and small and uh, so and um, so there you are did you have fun did you have fun did you have fun uh, so don't forget lots more of this on ballymaloo cookery school dot online and uh, come and join us another time in the meantime a big happy easter but a huge thank you to rachel and to gary and a happy easter from all of us here thank you very much for joining us and do keep sending uh, do keep sending those photographs uh, of your food and also and your pigtails and my pigtails and link up with Instagram and Twitter and all of that. We'd be looking out for it. Hey, did we have fun too? We had the best fun. So thank you and also a thank you to Toby and Chris and Bex who are behind the scenes here as well. Yay! Bye and happy Easter. Great, that was so fun. <laughs>